My name is Chris Stevens. I'm a language arts and science teacher at Metro Early College High School at the middle school side. The module that I was working with students on was um, about albedo and the uneven surface heating of the earth. Um, we were writing a scientific research paper where they were um, doing some preliminary research and then they were also doing experiments that they set up and then kind of comparing the results um, and writing a paper based on that. Having taught science for a number of years, one of the things that I found is that students really struggle to determine how to design an experiment that's actually that actually has measurable variables. In order to be successful in this main task, students would need to create a table that um, um, accurately was able to collect the data, included labels that reflected the independent and dependent variable, and kind of established the different time lengths that they would be measuring um, during their experimentation. This is our data table, and we'll have subject A, B, and C, and then how much ice is in there, the temperature at the start, five minutes and ten minutes, and then the change. So when we write our paper, we can either include this in our paper or just pull information from this to write our paper. What that does is it causes students to think scientifically, am I actually setting up a method section that's, gonna, that's going to afford me data to address my hypothesis? My job during this mini task was to um, first, you know, make sure the students knew, felt comfortable working with the template we would be using or the tools we would be using, um, and then to facilitate kind of discussion by walking around the classroom and checking in with students, you know, asking them why they're setting it up a certain way, you know, do they have their labels, what's their kind of their rationale for the time periods they've set up. For example, one of the groups was figuring out how they wanted to measure um, the amount of ice that covered a rock. Well, they only had one rock, so they had to be very deliberate with the different methods they would be using to measure that and how to set up a table um, accordingly. We're going to take um, this rock and we're going to cover it in about a half an inch of ice and have a heat lamp on it for 10 minutes and take um, the temperature of the rock at the end of 10 minutes and then we're going to do the same thing after the rock's dried off halfway covered and then not at all so we'll be able to see how the ice has um, affected the heat of the rock with the heat lamp on it so we'd be imitating like the polar ice caps melting and then during our paper we'll be able to tie that into other research with global warmings and how it how albedo of melting ice caps affects global warming. So after this mini task students would then conduct the experiment collect the data on um, which then they could import into a um, shared spreadsheet to then analyze later and then also collaborate with peers to look at to see if they notice any you know, trends across the board. Um, and all this information would then go into um, finishing writing their scientific research paper. You should really make sure you have enough time um, to work with students. Many times, you know, students have never done something like this before. So, you know, providing enough time to make sure that you have the time to go through it with them um, while also providing them enough time to kind of explore because there are going to be, you know, a learning curve where they're trying to figure out exactly what they need to do um, and how this whole process looks.